Okay, everybody, uh, just to follow up on one of the other videos, I had replaced the tweeter and uh, one of my other speakers. Uh, another problem that I'd like to help you guys figure out is if you have a blue sky, sometimes you'll hear the tweeter snapping and cracking, or sometimes the tweeter just cuts out and then cuts back in. Uh, this is not the tweeter itself. It's actually a problem on the circuit board that I found, um, just a cold solder joint. Not too hard to fix if you're semi handy with a soldering iron. You want to make sure that you don't uh, make a mistake and you know create a solder bridge between the area that we're going to fix today. But it isn't that hard to do, so we're going to get at it and uh, hopefully this will be helpful to you. So. Obviously, ugh, the first thing we're going to do is take this off. So we're going to do this real quick with a, I usually use a screwdriver, but to try and make this a little more efficient for the video, I'm using my handy dandy screwdriver. It makes it a little quicker. go. I was going to talk over that, but I realized you probably can't hear me with that noisy drill going. So put those screws aside. What we're going to do is just ever so slightly wiggle that out. And what we're going to have here is the one connector here going into the speaker. So it's just a pinch. You just pinch here and that comes off. And then we can lay this down and we can set the speaker aside in case you haven't seen inside one of these blue skies beautifully done completely sealed cavity just wonderful workmanship on the great great sounding speaker too all right so on the actual board itself the problem is and i'm going to try and find it for you i'm going to bring this up so you can kind of see these two transistors so you're going to notice if you really look there's a bit of heat scoring on that board these suckers get hot and what happens is after they get hot after a while they literally just if you got a crank on for a while like i do once in a while i usually don't monitor very loud but these two guys get hot and they'll actually create a cold solder joint so they actually desolders so you want to get at the back side of this board on these two guys and just carefully take off the old solder and put on some new solder. So we're gonna get at that and uh, not, a, not, a, not a really hard job, but just one of those. So what we're gonna do is grab a screwdriver and I'm gonna need a Phillips tip on this one. Uh, and of course it's in the screw gun. So that's where that would be. All right. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. Okay. So I'm going to undo the few screws at the back here. So that one's going into this brace. There's another one here. So those are the two brackets we're going to uh, pop this guy off and there we go loosen that off set those guys aside and the two screws on the XLR jack I'm going to keep them separate because they're a slightly different thread than the other guys not much but they are slightly different and we're just gonna wiggle this board out. You may find that your board has some glue 
around the LED holding it in there. So you want to, when you're taking it out, take your time. Don't be in a big hurry. Just kind of wiggle it slowly and stuff like that until it gets loose. Now again, these are all, I'm going to take this off so you can get a good look at it. You don't have to take them off, but I'm going to take all these plugs off so that we can just work just with the board. I'm going to set the rest of the power amp aside. You're going to flip it over. And you're going to take a look here. And these are the ones that are the problem. I've already done the work on this, so I'm just doing the video on it because, well, I wanted to share this one with you guys. These three, you want to take the solder off and re-solder it. So what the heck, we'll spark up the old solder and iron here. So what you need is your handy, handy dandy solder sucker. Solder sucker. That's a solder sucker. Um, it's a little vacuum pump you push down, create a little spring load of vacuum when you press the button, boom, sucks the solder back up into it. You can use that. You can also use a product called solder braid. Um, this is just literally braid of copper. It's great stuff. Um, this one here is actually a really big roll that I've had around for a long time and it's getting a little, little uh, old. So it's a little grumpy sometimes. You've got to really heat it up. But with this, you would lay the braid down and then heat up the braid and the solder gets wicked into the solder braid. Um, as a side note, I've actually repaired the speaker using solder braid for the uh, connection from the bobbin down into where you connect to the speaker. So that was that's that flexible braid that I used so that it didn't interfere with the speaker. Actually worked really well. Uh, I was quite surprised and, and happy with that. Um, so a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Always tin your soldering iron. When it's good and hot, that solder should just melt. See, it's being a little grumpy there, so I'm gonna see if I can get this tinned a little better. There we go, so that's the way it should look. Wonderful. Clean that off again. And then we're just gonna go in and heat that one up. Give it about two or three seconds and boop. There you go. So I got most of the solder off it. That's all I really want to do. I don't need to get it perfectly clean. And then I'm going to turn that a little bit and warm this up and give it some. And this is where you don't want to make a mistake. You don't want to have a solder bridge across any of these contacts. Won't work well will blow a fuse, possibly short out and wreck that transistor as well. Now I've done this one, so I've done all six before. You can kind of see they've been kind of worked on. Um, the heat scoring is still there. Um, next time I get to uh, my supply shop, I'm going to get some bigger fins. So I'm going to actually grab some heat sinks and I'm going to grab them that are about Oh, let's see. Let's see. I'm thinking, uh, like, see if I can get something that's about an inch and a half high. Yeah, that'd be perfect. That'd be about the same height as a cap. So if I got something that's about an inch and a half high, that's a TO220 package, I think they call it. <laughs> I'd have to check. Um, but yeah, and those those two uh, are, the, are the culprits right there. But what you want to do is you want to check this with a multimeter and make sure that there's no shorts. I'll go find it because that's kind of important. All right, so <laughs> after running uh, like a madman through the whole house to try and find the meter, it was right there. Uh, if you have your meter and you have a diode check, check there we go so what you don't want across any transistor generally speaking is a dead short so if we go across here nothing we go across there nothing here nothing we go to reverse polarity 
when I'm touching there. So that is still in good shape. No shorts. Again, checking this one before we put it back in. No shorts. And what you should have, if you're using an actual diode check, you should have about a 0.76 volt drop there. Lower across there. Higher. Lower. So that's a typical drop is point one point something point nine point two that all of these are fine nothing wrong with any of those as long as you don't have a dead short if you have zero don't put it back together double triple check get in there with the magnifying glass like I have here my wonderful handy dandy yeah I'm getting blind and you get in there and you get a really good look at those connections and make sure handy 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 all right so once you're hundred percent sure those are all good you can put it back together and give her so putting it back together same as taking it all apart so here nice thing about this one again is all the plugs are pretty much proprietary meaning you can't you can't put them in the wrong spot they'll only fit in one spot so I'm gonna put that one there the three that goes there and this one goes here make sure they're all seated in nice and snug that one did not sit in proper at all I'm gonna try that one again there I heard the click so when you hear the click you're good to go gently set this guy back in I'm gonna take a clip from the XLR and I'm gonna feed it through the hole first so I'm gonna actually angle this a little bit like this come on I put the pot in the hole and turn okay and that is in good shape I'm gonna flip this over here so you guys can see everything's lining up and the easiest one to do to kind of hold it in place while you work with the screws is that guy we'll just do a finger tight that's all you need okay now I got the two smaller screws that go in for the XR XLR snug as a bug and the other one Now I have a whole set of uh, the Blue Sky 6.5 and the 5.1 surround sound uh, system, but I am not using it very much to do surround anymore. I did do a lot of film and TV before, um, but I'm just doing a lot more of my own stuff. So I'm basically using the extra speakers as near fields and far fields or however you want to say that midfield and near field I guess um, and the other video if you haven't seen it yet is about a tweeter replacement that I I did on one of the other speakers as I was noticing a little bit of difference there big thing here too is when you get this like line that sucker up make sure it's right because this is your reference if you're going to use it at all. Um, I do have them at about a minus three. The two near fields are at about a minus three dB because my midfield setup with the two 6.5s and the subwoofer, they're back a little farther and it just matches so that when I'm going through A and B, I can literally go and it doesn't, the volume doesn't jump. So I can kind of reference the bass real quick, going into the midfields, and then go back to the near fields and continue monitoring. So that's the repair done. Everything's good to go. We've got one plug here that goes back to the speaker. So we're gonna do that. I'll bring my chunky speaker guy back in here. I know that it's hard to see. I'll do it this way. I'll do it this way. You can see from the, the other camera, hopefully. 
But here, the speaker output is over here on the amplifier side. So I'm gonna plug that in. There's the click that I like to hear. And I'm gonna take that and make sure that speaker wire doesn't get in the way. And there she be. So we're gonna put the screws back in and give it a test run. Uh, I do know that this one's working well because I just thought I'd share this one, but I did do this repair just not that long ago. So I'm gonna put a couple screws in to hold and uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next video guys. All right, so everything's back together. Put the speaker back in, working 100%. No popping, no cracking, it doesn't cut out anymore. Um, sometimes even with that uh, repair, sometimes you might hear a weird hiss on a, a pop. Um, works 100%, so I hope that helps you out. Um, if you like what we're doing and uh, the, the stuff that I'm sharing, lots more to come, I'm always fixing something. Uh, hit the subscribe uh, button down below. And if you like country music, take a look at uh, Durham County Band, durhamcountyband.com. You can check out uh, Durham County Band on YouTube here. We've got all sorts of videos and stuff like that that we share. Um, also have P. Wheeler. You can get P. Wheeler here on uh, YouTube and also on uh, durhamcountyband.com. You'll find a sub page for some of my solo stuff. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, we'll see you next time.